Graphing linear inequalities is basically the same as graphing a line, except there's a few issues complicating the deal. So if you add like y equals whatever, 2 thirds x plus 1, you could graph this because you've seen my other videos and you know how to graph a line, right? And so you would know that, well, what's really important is I have my y-intercept at 1 and I have my slope at 2 thirds. And you'd always start with the y-intercept. So oh, I'll go up 1, y-intercept, it intercepts the y at 1, I'll put my dot. And then from there, my directions to my next point is the slope. So starting here, where do I go next? Where do I head? Well, this is my slope, rise over run, up 2 over 3. So up 2 over 3, done, right? So that would be your line. That was supposed to go through those two points, my bad. So that's easy, right? Well, an inequality <laughs> is exactly the same concept. We could basically just change this to greater than or equal to, and now it's the same situation but an inequality. And the difference is, after you graph it, you now have sort of infinite number of correct answers. You have to shade a whole region, okay? So let's do a couple, and there's something you have to know ahead of time. Um, but again, it's very similar to graphing lines. The only issue that you should know out of the gates is this. If you have y is greater than 2 thirds x plus 1, that is different than, if you have greater than or less than and it's not equal to, that is a dotted line graph. If I took the same thing and now it's equal to, right, that is a solid line. So right out of the gates, it's kind of nice in a multiple choice type quiz. You know that if they wanted you to graph y is greater than 2 thirds x plus 1, you better have a dotted line, right? Same thing if it's less than. If it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, no matter what, that line had better be solid. And that's because it's including the points that it's drawn through where the dotted line is not. So let's do a couple of these suckers, right? The first thing you have to know is the dotted line, solid line, and then you have to shade. Okay, so, all right, okay, so again, let's do this classic one. Um, greater than or equal to 2 thirds x plus 5. All right, so <coughs> I'm going to show you my secret way to do it, and then we'll have that. We'll bond over that, and then there's kind of an official way to do it. So, again, this looks like a line. What's my y-intercept? 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, put a point there, and my slope is up 2 over 3. 1, 2 over 3, okay, everyone's happy. Solid or dotted line, this is a solid line because it's equal to, greater than or equal to. Okay, now, this is where the shading thing comes in, and you'll hear from other teachers and like some other math nerds, okay, the way to do it is to check any point below or any point above, and if that point makes a true statement in this inequality, then you shade that side of it. Example, 0, 0 right here. I'm going to check 0, 0, right, and see if that's correct. Okay, 0 for y, 0 is greater than or equal to 2 thirds times 0 for x plus 5. Is 0 greater than or equal to 5? And since the answer is no, you do not shade this whole region, you shade the other region because that must be correct, and then you would have this shading up here. So your final graph would be this solid line because it's inclusive and it would be shaded above. That's the official way. And I do, okay, fine. The official way is pretty cool. The way I do it though, and this is my own little secret technique, is if I'm walking left to right, just like we read left to right in America. So if I'm walking left to right, <laughs> this is uphill, you see. And basically, this is the greater than is, you know, everything above. Greater than is larger than. Everything above from that slope, you graph it. Everything less than would be underneath. So, uh, you know, whatever. You like my slang way. You like plugging in a point. They both work. If you can plug in a point quickly and easily, go for it. And then that's a good way to do it. Okay. So there's a, there's a typical question you'll see on a quiz. It'll be like this. It'll be like, okay, so I have this inequality. It'll be like, mm, I don't know. Y is less than, let's say, 3x plus 7. And if I graph that, which I could graph that, I'd shade a whole bunch of stuff. Let's do it quickly. Go up 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Put a point, up 3 over 1, 1, 2, 3 over 1. And it's a dotted line, right? And we see that it's everything less than. So I'm going to shade down here. You could try to check a point, but I'm just going to shade it because I know off the top of my head, because I'm a math tutor, uh, that that's the graph. Now they'll say, is the point 1, 2, excuse me, 1, 2 a solution to that graph? And there's two ways to do it. You could either look on the graph and say, I don't know, go over 1, up 2. It definitely looks like, yeah, it's in the shaded region. So this does check out as a point that is a solution to this graph. 
The other way to do it is to forget the graph and just plug it in and see if it makes a true statement. That's the wise way to do it. So let's do that. Let's put 2 in for y and 1 in for x. 2 is less than 3 times 1 plus 7. Is 2 less than 10? Yes, that is a factual statement. So yes, this point does work for that inequality. So that's how you do these. Now let me just graph a couple, and I will graph a couple weird ones because they come up on quizzes and tests. So again, kind of a normal one. I don't know, we could do anything. Y is greater than or equal to 2x plus 1. Before you even start this, you should be saying, oh no, wait a minute, solid line, not a dotted line because it's inclusive. Same thing. Okay, what's my y-intercept? We know my y-intercept is 1. Go up 1. What's my slope? Slope is always a fraction, so it's up 2 over 1. 1, 2 over 1. Solid line again. There it is. Now, where do we shade? You can check any point down here, and you'll find that it will be wrong. You could even check like 10, 0, right? Put it in here, and you'll find it's wrong. Oh, all these points, when you check them in here, they work. So this is shaded above. So this is your answer. That's how you graph an inequality. Okay, so here's two lame ones. So you're thinking like, I'm going to pause this video and move on to something more entertaining because I already understand this. Not the case, my friend. Because what if they said this, graph this inequality, right? And you're like, how is that even, there's no y equals mx plus b. What does that even mean? And this is what this means. When you graph something that simply says, x is equal to, or x is greater than, or x is less than. It's a vertical line. You go to x is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Put a dot, right? x is always going to be 5. So this actually, even if y was 10, x is 5. If y was negative 10, right, x is 5. Solid or dotted. This is a dotted line. And my little speech about y is 10 and x is 5, you could either just memorize that when it's x is something, you just do a vertical line, or you could understand it logically like I explained, but either way. Now, x is greater than, so it's all values larger than, so that is your graph, all right? So that's weird, we agree. And well, here's another weird one. What if you had y something, right? What if it was like, okay, y is less than or equal to three? Same thing, it doesn't look like y equals mx plus b, it looks, doesn't even look like a line. It totally is. In this case, this is a horizontal line. You go to three, right? You go one, two, three. Put a point. Y is always three. If X is 10, Y is three. If X is negative 10, it's a horizontal line. Solid or dotted? You definitely see that this is solid. You graph it. And now, is it less than or greater than? Less than or equal to, so it's all values down here. That's about as weird as you can get. I think graphing inequalities is actually easy. Graph the line. Beware if it's dotted or solid, and then shade one side or the other based on either checking a point or by just kind of common sensing it out like I do, which is probably bad advice, but we're tight and I'll give you that advice. So that's it. And remember, if you're having a hard time with this class at your local high school, you can take this online at Silicon Valley High School, pass it there, and the credits will be transferred back to you.